Hello Mike, can you just start by telling me a little bit about Idea Pharma and uh, your background? Yeah, so Idea Pharma is an industry leading strategic consultancy. We uh, typically get involved with clients around the beginning of phase two and advise them on how to take products from, from there through to the beginning of phase three in the right shape. Now you've just released the first Idea Pharma product innovation index. What is this all about? So the uh, pr Productive Innovation Index is really based on a very simple concept which is innovation is what you launch. It isn't about what you discover, it's about what you actually put on the market. Um, and this idea of productive innovation I think is one that, um, uh, that we started to think about when someone asked us a very basic question. If you gave the same molecule to two different companies, would they end up in the same place? And of course everyone knows the answer to that is no. So I thought, well, if we try and answer that question, how could you then work through the metrics for uh, the relative ranking of the pharmaceutical companies in terms of what they would do with those molecules? Who would be the most productive uh, company in terms of the innovation that they were given to start with? What was the inspiration for producing the index? The inspiration was basically, we, we see a wide range of different approaches to development and commercialization of molecules. Um, and we often get, get asked the question, who's best at it? And we don't know the answer to that, or we didn't know the answer to that until we developed this, this index. So in a nutshell, how does it work? In a nutshell, there are many metrics that tell you how good a company is at launching innovative molecules. You can take a look at public domain information, such as the time to, to a follower within a class. You can look at sales versus a similar molecule. You can look at the number of products that make it through the regulatory hurdle. Those metrics exist, they are public domain, so what we've done is to compile um, the, the, those uh, numbers for the top 13 companies uh, and then produce a ranking uh, based on uh, an assimilation of those numbers. And how do you obtain all the data for this? It's all, it's all publicly available data. Yeah, so all publicly available. I think that was important, is that we weren't making our own minds up about um, about which companies we liked and didn't. We wanted this to be publicly available so that anyone could go and do exactly the same thing themselves. Uh, once you uh, buy into the idea that some companies are more productive than others in terms of, of their innovation, you can then go looking for the figures, you can then uh, build your own ranking based on that. Um, we were just the first to want to do it, I think. A critic of the index could say that actually innovation is a very subjective thing. So. Do you really think it can be calculated in such a mathematical way? Yes, I think if you have a view that innovation is a uh, airy-fairy, blue-sky, abstract um, uh, uh, idea, of course that's fine. Our view is, though, that innovation is what you launch. You know, the nice ideas that are left on the lab bench don't help anybody. Uh, so people talk about cultures of innovation and people talk about ways to produce ideas. That's fine. And our view, though, is that they don't mean anything until you start getting paid for them. And at that point, it then becomes measurable, it then becomes objective. And there are numbers that tell you that people do develop uh, new class entrants more often than some other companies do, that they are better at shortening the time in phase three, that they are better at shortening the time to market. Um, so as soon as you accept the fact that, so, that there are measures that show you who's better than others at doing some of those basic things in launching innovation, productive innovation, then I think it removes that subjectivity from what innovation is and starts to say, well, look, this is objective, it's measurable, and what you can, what you can measure, you can manage. Now, some people would say that pharma is more about the pure clinical aspects of the drug, that actually commercial strategy and marketing can't make so much of a difference. Would you say that's true? No, I think but very simply we would say that um, they're all linked. There is no such thing as a clinical consideration that doesn't have a commercial impact. There's also no such thing as a marketing consideration that doesn't have a requirement for evidence. Uh, so in this space, the, the linking, the nexus between clinical and commercial is absolutely fundamental. We tend to reject the, hypo the, the idea that there should be such a thing as clinical and commercial within pharma companies because it's all the same thing. It's all about taking this molecule to a marketplace at some point in the future. So it seems that we're injecting ideas from the commercial environment into, um, into the clinical space. But actually, by the time you choose your populations, your endpoints, your indications, your dosages, your trade-off of safety and efficacy, all of those are essentially commercial considerations. They're not cold, hard clinical considerations. Um, they have to be proved in the clinic, 
but actually everything that you're making uh, a decision upon upon that point is, 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 is commercial. So I guess the key question is which companies actually came out well in this index, which were performing at the top of the list? So there were three companies which really came top, uh, so sort of came out at the top, uh, Johnson & Johnson, Amgen and Lilly. Uh, so you've got an interesting mix of a kind of company that I think is acknowledged to be innovative in Amgen and a couple that are perhaps more interestingly innovative if you like, they're taking you know, standard molecules and doing something different with them. And what is it that these companies are doing well? Um, can you give us some examples of particular uh, facets of their strategy or particular brands that show why they're performing so well? So what are they doing well? I think that this is about the organisation itself. So are there brands? No, because what we had to do was average out one brand to say is this just a, is this an outlier within its company or do the companies themselves encourage and foster productive innovation? Um, what we see those companies doing though is thinking very much about the molecule and what it has to do to get itself to market. I think what, what they've done which differs from some of the other companies in the ranking is they don't apply the same set of um, uh, rules and disciplines to every molecule that they, that they take through, which tends to standardise, tends to dumb down, tends to compromise every molecule's opportunity. Each of those companies we saw doing something different with its molecules.